our quest for a different world brought us to the liberated territories of the Middle East. The revolution in Rojava today embodies the spirit of resistance against their malicious world. The revolution happening in Kurdistan right now is our revolution and part of our search. Our search for what could be possible means accepting a rich heritage. The women of the Paris Commune of 1871 and the workers' militias of the Hamburg Uprising of 1923. That's us. The comrades of the October Revolution and the Spanish War. That's us. The workers on strike in India and the guerrilla in the mountains of Kurdistan. That's us. We are the anarchists of Greece. We are the witches and the rebellious farmers of the early modern period and the poor in the Consejos Comunales of Venezuela. We're here today to celebrate and honor the life of our fallen comrade, Anna Campbell. Anna was a feminist, environmentalist, and internationalist. She truly believed in the core ideals of Rojava and the YPG, so much so that she left her life, life here in the UK to fight along the Women's Protection Unit. She fought until the end, insisting to join the fight against the Turkish and Afrin. Sadly, she was struck down by a Turkish airstrike on the age of 15th of March. Since she went to university, she went to Sheffield and she met people there, and it's a very political left-wing uh, tradition there in Sheffield. <coughs> Um, she met friends who, who kind of transformed her view of the world, so she became very left-wing political at that point. Before that, she'd been <coughs> idealistic, but not in a political way. Um, so I think she started to find the, you know, her, the heels of her shoes started to ring on a road that she felt was leading her towards uh, her life's purpose, and that road ended. Uh, in Rojava. The way the Kurds honor their Shaheed is overwhelming. Anna, Shaheed Helene, is revered here. Photos of her are on walls, buildings already named after her. She gave her life for these people, this movement. We will teach our children about Helene for thousands of years, said one woman. Helene is the bridge between us and the world, said another. The graves of martyrs are flower beds, constantly tended. In Kobani we met Kurdish women of all ages who'd lost so much, who resisted and were victorious. We walked through the ruins of the town not yet rebuilt, past abandoned tanks, and I wondered who could have survived this devastation. We met a family who'd fled from Afrin when Turkey invaded, a mother and her mother and her babies, Traumatized, but no longer fearing for their lives, they said how grateful they were to Anna. The Kurdish movement, which over the last decades has generated the most interesting and revolutionary theory and practice about the position of women in political struggle and wider society. The Kurdish women's movement has shown us three crucial things. Firstly, that in the words of Serok Öjalan, a society cannot be free without women's liberation. It is only through the liberation of women that men too can be free of their male mentality or what feminists in the global north call toxic masculinity. <laughs> this means that women's struggle must be placed at the center of not only our political outlook but also our revolutionary practices. Secondly, the patriarchal subjugation of women is essential to the functioning of state power and capitalism. The social hierarchies of gender, race and class which oppress us strengthen the global stronghold of the forces which are in destroying our environment and our communities. The fight against capitalism cannot be separated from the fight against patriarchy. This is why we look to Rojava as an example of a society without states, outside of capitalism and dedicated to ecological practices. And we recognize that none of this would be possible were it not for the fight that Kurdish women have engaged in, in their homes and in their society, for their freedom to participate fully in decision making at every level. Those of us who've been organizing with the Women's Strike Assembly have been very lucky to be working alongside our Kurdish sisters and comrades for over a year now and learning from their movement about the meaning of womanhood in a global patriarchal society, about the beauty of struggle, and about the fight that is ongoing in Rojava. In the 12 months since Anna's death, I've seen her remembered countless times across the UK in unexpected places. The first time, last spring, I was on a train coming into Manchester. Her name had been graffitied in bright, bold letters by the canal, visible to thousands of people passing by on trains every day. 
The second time, I saw her name written over and over on bridges in the Lee Valley Park in East London. I know she's represented in this way across countless cities in Europe and beyond. This is proof that the sense of solidarity and the hope inspired by her and all other YPJ fighters, and indeed the Kurdish hunger strikers as well, is something that can and will endure. And as courage and the example she set for us in her uncompromising commitment to her values is embedded in our collective memory. I believe that she has made us all more brave and more committed to our, our political struggles. Everyone who is involved in the struggle for a more just world and liberty for all shares the loss of someone so dedicated to this fight. <laughs> Jin Jian Azadi, Shahid Namari. Um, so from the outset, we have been clear that the people of Kurdistan should have the right to self-determination and the right to democratically decide their own future. And I suppose if I'm to make any contribution to today's debate, it's perhaps to, well, not debate, but memory of Anna, it's perhaps to draw comparisons um, from our own struggle in Ireland and the struggle of the Kurdish people at the moment. And I suppose in today's society, 20 years on from a peace process in Ireland, it's easy for people, particularly of my generation, that are post Good Friday Agreement to forget the troubled past that we had. However, when we read about the treatment of the HDP political representatives, we're somewhat reminded of our troubled past, as we too endured the full force of systematic state repression. And as many of you will know in the room this evening, this year marks 20 years since the abduction by Turkish forces of Abdullah Öcalan and until very recently he'd been denied visits from his family team and legal representatives but we have been clear and we remain consistent that his freedom is crucial to building lasting peace and solidarity within the region and remarkably many people look upon the Kurdish struggle and the revolution particularly in Rojava as the position which has elevated women, it has done many things in that child marriage has now been outlawed, women stand equal to men in all legal matters, and significantly, education is now offered to all women free of charge. So that's momentous changes that has happened. Um, Kurdish women in the, in the women's protection units, units have acted as the biggest bulwark against the spread of ISIS and that has been acknowledged by many people in the Western world, however not enough, and it has been overlooked, um, particularly by many here in Britain and in Westminster, and we'll be doing all we can to highlight the role that the women's protection units have played throughout the time. The Kurdish people have indeed led in a no tonight's theme is based on women and particularly given that Anna was such a strong woman, um, the Kurdish women have led the women's liberation in terms of the has been embedded in within the revolutionary movement. Recently we had our MEP Martina Anderson and she was over visiting the hunger striker Leila Gervin and I'm sure many of you in the room will know her this evening. Um, Leela at present today is in her 129th day of hunger strike. Yeah, so you can imagine that. And I know we had hunger strikers and we can relate to that over in Ireland and some of them definitely didn't um, endure as long as what Leela is enduring. Um, so we send our solidarity to her and her family at this time. Um, Sinn Féin will continue to stand in solidarity with their Kurdish comrades and will continue to fight with you in their struggle for freedom and justice. The Turkish authorities and we will continue to demand that they act immediately, particularly in granting Leila's demands and to end the senseless policy of isolation which currently exists. We, we have many martyrs in the Kurdish movement who are all absolutely valuable and absolutely, uh, you know, they, they are incredibly important to us, but there's some people who, you know, their sacrifice and their lives really leave behind an absolutely uncomparable legacy. That means the way they touch people make sure that once they're gone, that their struggle multiplies, and that's exactly what Anna has showed us. The invasion of Afrin by the fascist Turkish army allied with um, many jihadi groups in some ways they, while ISIS was on the verge of defeat, especially territorial defeat, the Turkish army gave them a new home um, with a new uniform. And they invaded Afrin on the 20th of January 2018. And uh, unfortunately, their invasion was 
in some ways completed on the 18th of March, so three days after Anna, Anna fell, we lost Anna. And Leila Given, who is a elected HDP MP, was elected after she was put into prison for criticizing the Afrin invasion, but still elected to parliament while she was in prison. And uh, on the 8th of November 2018, she started an indefinite hunger strike um, to uh, against the isolation of the Kurdish people's leader Abdullah Öcalan because millions of Kurdish people have and also many other people in the region acknowledge that there can be no peace in the region without the uh, freedom of Abdullah Öcalan and, and particular well but also you know ending the isolation not just because as an individual he's important to us which he is but also because in the person is personage of Abdullah Öcalan the Kurdish people and the wider the people of the wider region are treated with isolation conditions, isolation policies. So the outright war against the Kurdish people in the southeast of Turkey, the Afrin invasion, these are none of these are disconnected from the treatment of Abdul Erjalan. These are all very connected, which is why we say the end of the isolation of, of Abdul Erjalan means a roadmap to peace and to negotiations. And I just want to end with the words of Muslim Doan, who for the Kurdish movement has become the symbol of Nevroz. So on the 21st of March 1982, Muslim Doan in his prison cell in the Erbakar prison set himself alight with three matchsticks to protest, you know, the treatment of his people, of course, um, and to uh, to protest the, uh, the fascism of the Turkish state at the time because it was straight also straight after the 1980s fascist coup in Turkey. And, you know, shortly after that, on the 14th of July, 1982, there was a death fast that was initiated by many of his comrades. And in a way, their joint, their joint slogan or their joint saying or their motto was, we love life so much that we are willing to die for it. And people like Imam, people like Leila Given and our three other comrades who have started their indefinite stri hunger strike in London yesterday as well, this is what, they keep reminding us of an imam in in some ways in the most heartbreaking way he said since i started my hunger strike i feel free because i feel like this is my resistance and we want him to be free but we also want them to be here with us so uh, in in true to anna's memory and to remember anna in the most beautiful and meaningful way, let's continue to struggle together and let's grow our family. Thank you very much. or in total oppression and has reached the level of a third world war. We cannot take ourselves out of this and expect or hope that others will do what we are too lazy or too afraid to do. It is the time of bravery and of decisions, the time of coordination and organisation. It is the time of action. We send you all our bravery and willpower, all our hatred for those that want to create a world of darkness and hopelessness. We send you all our love, you who fight with us, and light the fires of resistance in Hamburg and in Rojava. <laughs>